This is Someone's Pastor. This is a well-known pastor of a large church. This is a person who is supposed to be an example to God's people. Hey, smart Christians. I want to read something to you that I just received, and I just want to go ahead and cover this while I'm sitting here taking care of some other things. I want to just make this little quick video. I want to read this to you because I want to make it abundantly clear why I do the things that I do, why I cover what I cover. I cover a lot of teaching, but I also cover some things that deal with what's wrong with things that are happening inside the church, mainly on the other channel. And on the other channel, there was a video that I did today. And I wanted just to share with you a comment that came back. And it's not to put this person on blast. So I'll, I'll go ahead and cover up the person's name, but just show what he stated because we get these all the time, literally virtually every day. So let me go ahead and read this to you. It says, um, why do you think, Cora, that it is okay to always expose people? What do you get out of it? And so my response was Ephesians 5.11, Titus 1.9, 2 Timothy 4.2, 2 Corinthians 11.12, Jude 3. And then I stated, what do, you th what do you take away from those passages? And so my point is, we're required to do those things. So what do I get out of those things? I don't get anything out of that. But what I'm doing is what I'm required to do. For many people, church has become a joke. And why people aren't bothered by that, I do not get. Paul tells us plainly, and we'll look at the words that are used here. He says in Ephesians 5.11, do not participate in the unfruitful deeds of darkness, but instead even expose them. So one of the words that he uses is expose them. What are we supposed to do? Expose them. There is an awful lot of church foolishness. As a matter of fact, I've even come across a video clip that just titled Church Foolishness. You think that this is okay? This high-pitched, red robe wearing pastor standing on someone's back, you think that's okay? This is why Jude says, rather than me doing what I want to do, right? You talk about our common salvation. I've written you to tell you to do what? To contend, to matter of fact, earnestly contend for the faith, which was once and all, once we're all handed down to those saints. For certain persons, some people have crept in unnoticed, those who were long beforehand marked out for this condemnation, ungodly persons who turn the grace of God into licentiousness and deny our only master and Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, we are supposed to call this up out. Again, we are supposed to expose, we are supposed to contend. Now, what these oversized, bad built dads are doing, I guess they're being praised dancers. This is wrong. This is making a mockery of the church. This should just not be. And so to follow off what Paul is saying, he says, and what I am doing, I will continue to do. That is in order to undermine the claim of those who would like to claim that in their both admission, they work on the same team and terms as we do. They do not. How do you serve a God, a holy God? Remember the same God who Nadab and Abihu approached and were burned up. And God says that by those who approach me, I will be regarded as holy. 
What about what we're seeing is holy? And we've seen numerous clips after clips after clips of people doing things, people saying things. How does it not bother you? Now, what you do because you're bothered by that, it will vary between person to person. You may want to talk to the person. You may want to uh, expose a person either by video, by text, by what have you. But what you certainly want to do is you want to warn the body. You want to make sure that the body understand that these things should not be so. Why? Because if you keep allowing these things happen, you're going to have the next generation of false faith teachers that show up, including young children who are practicing already. That God prepared for them who love him, praise him, because everything he left behind, God's about to replace it with something better. Somebody shout better. Somebody shout better. Come on, shout it. Better. Better. I need 20 people in this room to get on your feet and begin to praise him. Get your dance on. In Titus 1.9, he says, holding fast the faithful words, which is in accordance to the teaching so that he will be able to exhort in sound doctrine and to refute those who contradict. So we exhort sound doctrine and we refute those who contradict. Notice on this channel, as well as the smaller channel, uh, we're always going to show what actual doctrine is. The majority of what we do over here is that now the exposing and calling out and so forth, the, the letting people know the warning. Uh, that happens a lot over on the smaller channels. That's where most of it is relegated to. But we'll do some over here on this channel, too, because that's our job. The interesting thing, though, is that you've got people who get upset because you're doing that, who think that's all we do, which tells me a couple things. One, when it comes to teaching, you're not getting a diet of teaching because you don't know that that's the main thing that this channel is known for, that we do. Again, 1,300 videos on this channel. The overwhelming majority, about a 1,000 plus of those videos are teaching. But you didn't know that because you're not focusing or looking for the teaching. You're looking for the crazy things, maybe something that you enjoy. Maybe you're not used to uh, the pure word of God, as, as the Bible says, that babies desire uh, as they desire milk. They should also desire. We should also desire the word of God just like that. That might be the issue. But you think that it's OK to let these things go or let God handle those things? No, that is not our job. Our job is to do exactly what Paul says to do. He says in 2 Timothy 4, 2, and I want you to notice the words that he says. He says, preach the word. Be ready in season, out of season. This is the words. He says, reprove. That's a reason for us to do something. That's a word for us to do. Not a nice word, but it's what we're supposed to do. He says, rebuke. Rebuke's not a nice word, especially if you're on the rebuking end. But we're called to do so. He said, exhort with great patience and long suffering or instructions. Why? And I want you to think about this. If you ask the same question to Paul, this would be Paul's answer. He gives a reason why for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. What but have or wanting to have their ears tickled. They will accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance to their own desires. And what will happen? They will turn away their ears from the truth and will be and turn aside to myths. But you be sober in all things, <clears throat> endure hardship, do the work of evangelists, fulfill your ministry. Why people think it's okay to simply let these things pass, that is wrong. As a matter of fact, it violates what we're told to do. Paul tells us that those who continue in sin, that is in their actions or their words, rebuke in the presence of all so that the rest will be fearful of sinning. Well, guess what? You can't get more uh, in the appearance or in the presence of all than doing it this way. Now, sometimes you do it by phone. Sometimes you do it in a, in a, in a more secluded, uh, personal setting. But the point is to warn the body, to make sure that the flock is not harmed. That's rule number one. And to also, along with that, to protect the integrity of the word of God. Remember, you had people that were doing things the wrong way who defiled or had a profane view of God's offering because the prophets, the priests, the priest's sons, were not obeying God. They were corrupting the word of God. And so therefore they despise as in first Samuel, they despise even the offerings of God. And so that is the reason why you do what you do. And if you don't have a problem with that, I do not understand what's happening with you. What is it about you where the love of God in you doesn't compel you to warn others and to move people towards sound doctrine?